So look, I'm going to look at the fifth nitrate action program and the big area of dairy cow banding, which is causing a lot of confusion out there. And then I'm going to look at a real an example of a case study of a farmer in my own Northwest Kilkenny area. So the first table here, first of all, is just a bit of background information. I suppose the question comes up, first of all, why, where does banding come from or why do we need it now? Well, really, the, the EU Commission, looking at the water quality trends in Ireland, came back to the Department of Agriculture saying that we need to look at the different uh, dairy cows, for example, in Ireland and see have they all the same level of uh, nitrogen and phosphorus outputs. So the department uh, then did a study and we arrived at banding where we now have three bands. And as you see there, this table here shows you nationally what the bands are currently and what percentage of farms in Ireland are in different bands. So I've highlighted there in red that in 2021, 15% of dairy suppliers in Ireland were in band one. In other words, their average milk yield sold per cow was less than 4,500 kilos. So I'm just saying sold per cow because it's not the milk recorded yield per cow or the produce per cow, it's your milk sold per cow. I see two thirds of farmers in the country are in the middle band between four and a half thousand kilos and 6,500 kilos. And 19% of farmers nationally are above 6,501 kilos. Uh, you might say, what's a kilo? What's a liter? You know, one liter is approximately 1.03 kilos. So the upper band, as we see in the next table, is anyone whose average milk yield over a three year period or in the year preceding, which is 2022 is actually over 6,313 litres of sole milk per cow. So the table is showing, I suppose, the proportion of bands or farms in band three is increasing over time. And that's testament to good breeding. Uh, and you see there, there's a large range of farm type and technical fishery within each band. So that's just a background table. Maybe that is the case for Kilkenny Water Area. If we apply to Kilkenny Water Area, you can obviously look at how what the percentage looks like in your own discussion group, but that's where this thing has come from, the base assumptions. The higher the milk yield output, the higher the organic NNP output. So this table, which hopefully you can see there, explains just in summary what the bands are. So band one is where your three-year average milk yield, and this year we're talking about the year 2020, 21, and 22. If the average of that is below 4,500 kilos, or 4370 litres of milk per cow, well, your organic nitrogen calculation from now on will be done at 80 kilos per head per year. Currently, before the change came in on the 1st of January, just gone, all dairy cows in Ireland were at the one band of 89 kilos per cow. And that has gradually been increased over the years, going back over the last 10, 15 years. You can also see there in green the organic phosphorus content. Band two is where your average three-year milk yield or the yield in the previous year is between 4371 litres and 6313 litres. And that organic nitrogen loading will move from 89 kilos to 92 and 13.6 for the phosphorus. And then band three, if you're over 6,500 kilos of milk sold per cow or 631, 6313 litres, well, then you're going to move to the higher banding of 106, which obviously is a huge increase from the current figure of 89 per cow. You'll also notice there too that the phosphorus is increasing in line with yield. So the banding reflects the increased organic excretion of organic nitrogen phosphorus as yield increases. So look, the bottom point there as well is where is this going to come from, this yield? It will be based on the co-op average milk yield, which will be a three-year rolling average or farmers will have the choice of picking the yield of the previous year. And ICPF will provide the milk details and the Department of Agriculture will provide the 365 day average cow numbers from the AIM system. It's not the end of month averages. It's not what you might see on your ICPF co-op performance report. It's the 365 day and that is currently the way the Department of Agriculture calculate organic nitrogen stocking rates. So as you see on the next page here, this is a draft or an illustration of what will what the page would look like on, on your ICBF page. And we'll talk about the options available if you're not on ICBF. So the department are working in conjunction with ICBF on developing a page for each farmer that's on Herd Plus or 
on ICBF, first of all, dot com, where you'll be on one page, you'll be shown your three year average yield. You'll see the number of cows each year, the total litres sold, the total kilos of milk. And then you'll see as the thing is highlighting at the top of the screen there, what is the average or of the, over the three years? So that's what we'll show you here. So if you decide to pick the three year rolling average, you'll be ticking the box at the top part of the page. And then also a bit of flexibility was introduced there in December where you could actually pick the last calendar year. And that might be to your advantage where the milk yield sold per cow in 2022, for example, was not above 6,313 litres. So farmers are going to be asked on an annual basis to go into icbf.com and they must select either the three-year rolling average figure for banding or the previous year milk supply. Now, this has to be done by a specified date. That date is not yet known by anyone in this country. There was speculation in the press about it being the 14th of February. That date has not been confirmed. And when it is, I'm sure it will be widely publicized. So if you don't make any return to the department, you will be allocated by default to the highest band of 106 kilos of nitrogen per cow. That's an important thing to remember. For those of the, on the call or farmers who are not engaging with icbf.com, we are told there will be a paper certification letter sent out to suppliers who will have to go to their crop to get their yield certified over the three years, and then they'll have to return that and the department will apply the average stock, stocking rate or cow numbers over those three years to arrive at the banding figure. So that's just an important point there. If you're not set up on icbf.com, there will be a paper option. But again, we don't know any more detail than what we can tell you tonight. This is an information meeting and there's no mention of a specified date as things stand as I'm speaking to you here tonight. So what am I going to do now just to conclude uh, a bit on the banding? I'm taking an example here of current clients of mine in the Northwest Kilkenny area. So just to explain what the farm is, it's a typical farm of 60, 68 hectares, 168 acres. So in 2022, this farm was stocked at your typical maybe one cow per acre or 2.4 livestock units per hectare. So that correlates to 210 kilos of organic nitrogen per hectare. And the stock numbers that are planned for this year, 2023, are 130 dairy cows and basically 32 0 to 1 and 32 1 to 2 heifer replacements, plus three stock bulls who are all over two years of age. So really it's a, I suppose, a simplified dairy system, which is quite common in, in the Kilkenny Waterford area. From ICBF, we know at this stage that the milk yield per cow of sole milk is 6,342 litres or was in 2020. It was 6,380 litres in 2021 and 6,400 litres in 2022. So as you can see, the three year average for this herd is in excess of the 6,313 litres. And also the 2022 year is also in excess of the 6,313 litres. So this farm will be allocated to band three at the 106 kilos of organic nitrogen per cow, up from the current 89 kilos per cow. So what we're gonna look at here now, I suppose, what are the implications and options for this farm in the current year, 2023 and in 2024? So I suppose just to repeat that, that the data will be all up on the ICBF. It's not milk recorded yield, it's yield per cow based on the number of cows on the farm from the department's AIM system. So the first thing I'm gonna bring you through, hopefully you can see this page, is a little uh, ready reckoner that I put together there that we have available within Chagas on Excel, where we just list off the cow and the, the planned stock numbers. So you see the 130 dairy cows, the 32 and not ones, the cattle ones two, and the cattle two plus. So maybe the first point to make is that the other livestock on your farm, their organic nitrogen per head figure is not changing. Those figures have been there since derogation started back in 2006. And we talk about calculating organic nitrogen stock rates. So what is changing here, as you can see at the top, because this farmer is in band three, the dairy cows are going to be calculated at 106 kilos per head. So what's happening here is that we're multiplying across 32 by 24 for the not one cattle, 32 by 57 for the one to two cattle, the three bulls, and then the 130 cows at the top. So that gives us a total organic nitrogen production of 16567. 
16,567 kilos of organic nitrogen. Again, when you ring your agent or look up your PPS online, there's a nitrates table there under the tab of farm details where you can look back at any time to see your previous nitrate figures. And the nitrate figures for 2022 are not as yet finalized by the department. Look, the next thing then what happens is that your BIS or your basic payment scheme, which is now will be called the BIS. So the land that's used in the calculation is only the land that's on your BIS, your old BPS application form. And I know for some farmers out there tonight that that is not the true area of land they're farming. And that conversation maybe needs to be had with the owners of the land where there's land that's not for various reasons on the single farm payment. And that might be an issue for some farmers to talk about this year. So we divide the total organic nitrogen by the hectares. And for this farm for 2023, we're getting an average kilos of nitrogen of 244 kilos of organic nitrogen per hectare. Remember I said the earlier that in last year, but the other calculation, this farm was at 210 kilos of nitrogen. Now he's moved up to 244. So how is he fixed for 2023? There's no problem in 2023 because the derogation upper limit is still at 250 kilos of nitrogen per hectare. So there's no adjustments needed under land, cows, reducing heifer numbers or slurry export. That's the first point to make. Now, as we mentioned and Cahill referred to it earlier, we are told or being told that the department have to make a submission to the European Commission by the 30th of June on water quality for the years 2021 and 2022. And if that report comes back, which is meant to come back, I think by the 30th of September of this year, if that support, uh, that report is not shown an improvement, well then it's in the legislation that the derogation upper limit will move down from 250 down to 220. So this little red director here is showing, in this, if this is the curve for this farmer, he will be 1,607 kilos over the organic light limit to be under 220. So what are the options? And these are just options to look at with your advisor and see what route may you go. So this is saying one option here is to get an extra seven hectares of land to bring down the stock rate below 220. Another option that's looked at here is in this case here, it means possible a possible reduction of 15 cows from off the farm. And maybe there's a number of cows on the farm that can be identified through milk hardings, low producers. So whether a cow is given 300 kilos of milk solids or 600 kilos of milk solids, she is still a cow on the farm at the 106 rate individually. So the banding is not done per individual cow, it's based on the average milk yield of the cow in the herd. The other option that's put up here is maybe people might look at contract heifer rearing. So this little calculator is indicating that 20 heifer units, which would be 20 not to ones and 20 one to twos, could be, if they were moved off farm, that would also bring you in, in compliance. And the final option here, and I think we spent a good bit of time on here, is slurry export. So look, the whole area of slurry export is really tightening up. The nitrogen has halved, as you know, and getting farmers who can take that level of slurry. And while slurry has a very high fertilizer value, like that slurry there being exported off the farm would have a fertilizer value close to 8,000 euro. So this is just a little show one or the other or the other. And really, people will have to sit down with their advisor and see what do you think is the best route to go. Might it make sense to take an extra land? Can you get it, etc.? And just do the sums for your own farm first. There are so many farm situations out there. It's very hard to give a carte blanche or one recommendation for everyone here tonight. The last slide here, the second last slide, is looking at those options just in words, I suppose. I won't go into it in detail. There's pros and cons for taking extra land. Obviously, the pros may be that the stock rate on the farm maybe is gone too high anyway, and you're spending a lot of extra money on purchase forage and concentrates. So maybe this will realign your stock rate. Obviously, the cons, what will it cost, the rental cost and the running cost? Will it add additional workload, distance from the home yard, and the big one, of course, the availability of land? Reducing cow and stock numbers, again, may align your stock rate with your grass grown on the farm. Maybe it will reduce labor requirements on your farm. And obviously we have to look and do the sums on will it reduce farm income? So I think the point should be made that I think this is not just one, uh, one, one thing, which is extra land. This could be like solving somatic cell count, that this could be, there's no one magic bullet that you may have, have to look at one or two of these options and tie them in with what you think will work for your farm. The third one there, contract heifer rearing, it does reduce labor requirement. It does simplify the system, but obviously then there's a biosecurity risk 
uh, you know, a moving animal in and out of the herd, finding a technically efficient rear, and also it will incur a cost. But don't forget, if you keep those heifers, you don't keep them for free on your own farm either. And look, the last one that's just put up there on exporting slurry, we can do the calculation, but it's a different loss to the farm of N, P, and K. Can we find a farm? And as we said earlier, Eamon has reinforced that the nitrogen content now is at 2.4 kilos of nitrogen rather than five kilos per cube meter up to the 11th of March of 2022. Look, as I said earlier, just coming to a close here, the other thing, as I said, each year a farmer will have an option to look at the milk yield per cow in the current year as it goes next year. So if you are saying, okay, I want to be lined up for 2024 and I don't want to be in the high band of milk production and it with the 106 well these are just a few options maybe you might look at to see can you bring down milk yield per cow does it suit your system feeding whole milk to calves maybe you bought an automatic feeder so maybe that mightn't be considered we know meal feeding increases milk yield does it increase profit so reduce meal feeding meal feeding mid-season uh, a lot of people talk about keeping the cull cows on the farm for longer because that will obviously include be included in your average cow number but don't forget the cow is on the farm as well producing her own organic nitrogen and have you got the winter forage and the winter housing to, to do that and then some people maybe maybe who are teetering around this 6200 to 6400 litre bracket you know will look at these options and maybe they might decide to dry off a little earlier or do some one stay short term in this early part of the year and maybe in the period right before drying off, but I think early part of the year. So look, they're just, we're looking into detail, management strategies to reduce milk in the year. You have to see, is it feasible to do that, to try and aim to be in band two rather than band three. And Richie, as well as to so summarize a few things here then, it is part of the regulation now it's in. The banding will be determined by a three year average or the preceding year, you have the choice each year to pick that and make that submission by date yet to be announced. The maximum allowable end in 2024 will be dictated by the water quality report of September of this year. And in, really individually with my clients, I'm sure everyone on the call, you need to contact your advisor and do your own individual calculation. So what should farmers do next? Calculate your individual nutrient density per hectare under the new regulations for the current year. And if the 220 limit was to come in next year, and then as I've outlined tonight, just outlined, there are a number of potential management actions to consider, but you do need to speak to your local advisor to discuss the feasibility and economics of each of these for your farm. And I suppose in all this talk tonight about regulation and this, that and the other, at the end of the day, the question has to be posed, what are we all going to do individually on our farms to improve water quality? Everything I spoke about tonight is banding, it has stock rate implications, it has nitrogen, chemical nitrogen implications, but look all the other things that the Eamon touched on there, about slurry storage, soil water storage, spreading protected urea, there's an awful lot that we can do that we're not doing currently to improve water quality. That's what's going to drive the future of Irish dairy. And the last slide, I suppose, a, a lot of us here tonight are in derogation. What are the implications of banding for derogation 2023? So for some people on the call, banding will increase the organic nitrogen per hectare, maybe above 170 per hectare for the first time this year. And maybe you have to consider the option of entering derogation for the first time. So that's if that is the case, the derogation deadline is the 31st of March. It's not so far away. If you think you need to be applying for derogation for the first time, please contact your local Chagas office in Kilkenny, Mullavat, and or indeed Dungarvan as soon as possible. Number two, banding on other farms who are in derogation will increase the organic nitrogen above the current derogation limit of 250. That's something that needs to be looked at because uh, the cow has gone from the 89 kilos to the 106. The derogation deadline to remind us all tonight for the submission of fertilizer accounts for last year and to apply for this year's derogation is the 31st of March. So a quick reminder that if you haven't submitted your information to your derogation planner and really as well as contact your Chagas advisor or your private planner and do this figure for your own farm. A lot going on there on banding, but hopefully I've given you a quick summary of what's likely to happen, what is going to happen or what is in law for the year 2023 onwards.